having fitted the track um, with the greatest anticipation, I got my Hankyu uh, train set from uh, T-Gage, uh, brought it up to my workshop. Here's the set in the box. I mean, even to join the couplers on this is, uh, you know, something of a feat, you know, uh, to get the carriages together. In any case, that's another day's work and uh, put the locomotive on the track, hooked up the wires and lo and behold, the locomotive actually moved. There, there are a couple of problems. First thing I discovered was that my prototype Clifton suspension bridge uh, was too low to admit the train. So the locomotive would come up to the thing and then uh, in a rather comical way just stop dead. Um, so I had to tear the Clifton suspension bridge prototype apart and then uh, put blocks, very simple balsa blocks in underneath the piers and uh, that rectified the whole problem. There was a certain amount of remodeling, etc. but um, uh, that got that done. Now, um, it took me about 20 minutes to remodel the damn thing in Tinkercad, uh, so that the uh, uh, original prototype model is now uh, modified and uh, I'm printing that out, uh, uh, the new, newly revised version of the uh, Clifton Bridge. The other thing I discovered was that um, the small g box girder uh, and hoop girder bridges that I'd built uh, were really too narrow. Um, I could have fitted the tracks into them with a bit of shaving and pairing, but really they're too narrow for the tracks. Again, these are prototypes and uh, the solution is to change the uh, CGI model in Tinkercad. And that's what uh, I've done and uh, they'll be printed out now with the correct width. I think it's better with these bridges just to leave a little bit of elbow room uh, for the track to sit in. Uh, you don't want them too wide. Uh, it looks really neat when they uh, have that confinement of the track and the train. But uh, they do need to be wide enough to accommodate uh, the track and train. Um, a bigger problem uh, I discovered at one end of my layout. Um, again, I had tunnels at both ends. Uh, I had to remodel the arch tunnel at one end, and that's no problem. But what I discovered is that the enclosed tunnel, the girder tunnel at the other end, uh, is not going to work. <laughs> A couple of functional things. Again, it's another comedy mistake. Uh, uh, first thing is if the train derails in there or stops in there it's absolutely impossible to reach uh, from the, the outside through the girders uh, the second more serious thing is that you can't clean the track um, and with T-gauge uh, you need to be able to kind of get to access the track at all times in order to clean it uh, remove any bits of dust etc etc uh, wipe it down and then uh, get the uh, the pen onto it as well. Okay, so we're back to needing to do surgery. Best thing for this is uh, the um, box cutter knife. The sharper the better. And you just need to attack the damn thing. I'm cutting this here, roughly to follow what I imagine is the line of the tracks. And I'm hoping that when I cut through, I should be able to lift this off with minimum disruption. Just going to cut this off here. So run that in around there. Like that. And then lift. Not too bad. Okay.
Now, now again, it looks it looks like a mess, but uh, believe me, um, it's worth doing this at this stage. What I'm going to do is uh, just take my masking tape here to seal this up a little bit. And again, masking tape uh, is a very cheap, very adaptable modeling material. Um, as you can see. And it provides a really good surface for uh, PVA, acrylic, and um, harder modeling materials then, like polyfiller, uh, wall filler, or uh, indeed car body filler like Bondo or Isopan. Um, Isopan is actually my modeling material of choice. It's uh, really cheap and it is uh, pretty permanent when you put it on. So uh, we do a quick early surface with the masking tape and then we will finish the damn thing off with ice upon. Um, I see a lot of people using a lot of uh, cyan or acrylate uh, super glue for their modeling and uh, for me it's really expensive it's completely unnecessary the thing I'm using at the moment is uh, this a little bit of a product placement it's a uh, Collal, it's a, I think it's a Dutch glue. It's an all-purpose. It's slightly solventy, um, but uh, whatever solvent is in it doesn't seem to attack airboard. So uh, it's a really good multi-purpose glue. It's cheap as chips, and um, it comes in these small little tubs, or it comes in big tubs, and you can just whip the the uh, cap off and refill it from the big tub, which costs about ten euro. So Collal. I recommend it. Okay. Now I'm going to have to be kind of careful, of course, uh, when I'm painting this because I don't want any more crap uh, going onto the track, uh, if possible. Okay. 